Hey everybody, I'm Garrick DeMeyer from Royal Constrictor Designs, and I wasn't really planning on making a video today, but I found a good opportunity to do a little educational video here. Um, a lot of people ask me, I get this question all the time, how do I properly incubate my ball python eggs? So I'm gonna go through the process with you. I've showed it on many videos in the past, but I've never had a video dedicated solely to how I set my eggs up. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna find a gravid female, or a, a female that laid. Whoa, look at that, here's one. This is a banana female. And she was, she just laid her clutch. Actually, I think she laid it late yesterday. So she's got them in there. Now when a female is gravid, well before they're gravid, before ovulation, they tend to wrap around the water bowl. So you'll notice the female will be on the cooler side of her tub most of the time. Once she ovulates, then she'll move over to the warm side. You know, when this tub is in the rack, there's a strip of heat tape going underneath the tub on the back half of the back quarter of the rack. So she'll spend all of her time there and they crater into the substrate. So the substrate obviously needs to get changed. It's been, you know, in there for a couple of months at least as she's um, been sitting there. But anyway, um, she craters down in there to get as close to that heat source as possible. The bottom of the tub is the warmest spot in this in this tub. So that's where she tries to get down to to keep herself warm to incubate those eggs internally before she lays them. So uh, most females are pretty defensive with their eggs. So you have to be careful about biting. Um, usually if you go in kind of towards the back, you can see her head is right there. So normally what I'll do is I'll just come in like this and I try to unhook their tail from the eggs. And then I'll just move her right there. Okay, now, so we've got eggs here. Uh, that one's infertile, that's referred to as a slug. Then we got one, two, three, four, five good eggs. So a total of six eggs with one being infertile. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna gently peel the slug off. You have to be very careful when doing this. You don't want to tear into the good egg. So yeah, this is basically feels like a rubber ball for the most part. So that will just go in the garbage. There's no chance that that's going to hatch. So okay, now we got five good eggs here. So these are my incubation containers. These are one of my incubation containers. Um, these are really old. Uh, I've probably been using these for 10 years now, maybe, maybe even closer to 15 years. These were called rubber, rubber made revelations, I believe. Um, but you can find something similar, similar to this. Just wanna really make sure that the lid sits on there pretty tight. These, these lids are, are fairly thick. So when they're sitting on there, you know, they don't really let a lot of air escape around the lid. Um, a lot of the cheaper rubber made and Sterilite containers, uh, you know, the ones you can find at Walmart for $1.99, those generally have pretty flimsy lids. And I noticed that a lot of air escapes from around the edges and the, the clutch could dry out inside. So with these, I don't have to worry about that. Okay, so what I do is uh, I'm using perlite today. Um, I use both vermiculite and perlite, the store that I buy mine at in bulk. I didn't have any vermiculite last time I went to go pick some up, so I'm using perlite instead. Um, so I fill, I put roughly you know, around an inch of perlite in the bottom of this tub. And then I uh, fill the water level up to right about at the top. Like if you just go in here just a little bit, there's water, it's completely saturated. Um, so you don't want, you just wanna make sure that this light diffuser, this is, uh, you can buy these in big sheets. Uh, I buy mine at Home Depot. And then I just take um, cutters and I just cut to the size that it needs. So this fits in here really nice. So you don't want the diffuser to be able to sink into the perlite to the point where if the eggs are sitting on here, the eggs are gonna be touching water. The idea is to have this chamber be close to 100% humidity, but no actual moisture touching the eggs themselves. You don't want the eggs to take in too much moisture and drown the embryo inside. So, uh, and then for ventilation, I just put, this one right here has three tiny little holes in this side and in the other side. Now I've done 
various variations on this. Uh, I have some of these containers where I put one in each of the four sides. Um, as long as the airflow is really just a minimum. Um, the eggs don't need a whole lot of ox oxygen and you wanna make sure that humidity stays in there. Um, if you don't have enough moisture in there, the humidity and you have a lot of ventilation, the, the moisture could eventually evaporate and leave the container, which means your eggs are gonna dry out. So we'll pick these up. I typically leave the eggs stuck together. You know, sometimes the eggs are loose, but you know, like these are stuck together. Um, as long as they're healthy eggs, it's certainly not a problem to do that. Um, I try to get any debris off the eggs as much as I can. You know, you're never gonna get it perfect, but you know, in the wild, they incubate with all kinds of dirt and crud on them, on them so I'm sure that's fine. Okay, so I will just put this clutch in here like this. And now this one, I don't think I need to do anything special with, but I do sometimes take little pieces of light diffuser. Like if this one was completely loose, I would hold this one in place using a small light diffuser. Like I could put it, put it right there and I could move this so that that's pressed up against there. Um, and that'll hold that egg into place a little bit better, just in case it would become detached. You don't want it rolling. Um, you don't want to ever change the orientation of all Python eggs if like this is up on these eggs and has to stay that way throughout the entire incubation because the embryos are in a fixed position inside that egg and the yolk, if you flip them upside down, the yolk's basically gonna collapse on the, on the embryo and possibly kill it. So you just wanna make sure that, that up is up. A lot of people will put like little, um, like a little marker dot on the up. But I mean, I, you know, I'm not gonna even touch these eggs again until the day they, they hatch or the day they, they pip. So that's basically how I set the eggs up. And then I'll just put, so these are, this is my ID card for her. Uh, banana hatched in 2017. I got it from someone with the initial of KT. Uh, and then I filled in some of the stuff in advance, but she laid eggs on 4-16-2020. And she laid a total of six eggs. So what I do is I put the total number of eggs and then a dash and then the, the number of slugs, if there are any slugs. Uh, most of them luckily don't lay slugs, so it would be you know just a six there. But six dash one means that she laid six eggs and one was a slug. And um, then that way I can go through and look at all of my females and see if I have any that produce more slugs than others, or if I have any that don't produce as many eggs as others. And that way I know which ones I should probably um, move out of my breeding colony and put something else in their place. You know, if she, if she laid three eggs a year and one was a slug every year, well, that would mean I'm only having a good chance to get two actual babies per year. Um, it's not probably gonna be worth it to breed a banana female and get two babies out of it every year. So, um, and then over here, I put the male that I used to breed her. This is a, a super banana calico, if you can read my sloppy handwriting. Super banana calico, and I think that one also, it's a possible pastel and yellow belly. Problem with the super banana is the super part of that kind of washes the overall appearance of the snake out quite a bit, so I, I'm not 100% sure about yellow belly or pastel in that one, but this clutch may go part way to help tell me that, and I'm gonna have several more clutches from him as well, so I'm sure I'll be able to figure out exactly what genetics that male has at the time. So then next year, um, I'll put the next clutch right there and I can just keep going down and down. And by the time I hit the bottom here, uh, this female will probably be in someone else's collection because I, um, I tend to upgrade my females fairly often. I, I just hold stuff back. I hold so many babies back every year that I'm forced to upgrade females. Like I've got, you know, this female's perfectly good. She could breed for 20 years or more, but you know, it, why Why would I have a normal banana female in here if I could have, like, say, like a super orange dream NG banana or something like that to replace her with? So I'm always upgrading my males and my females. But this is definitely enough room for all the clutches she's going to lay while she's here. So then I will put that on back with her tub. And I keep it. See, she... So I'll move her back into the spot where she was. And then I put this in this holder and I keep it up like this. 
and we wait about a week to sometimes up to two weeks and let her sit and think that she's incubating the eggs and then uh, we'll we'll wash the container out put new substrate in wash her off really well we just use warm water and a uh, and paper towel wipe her down really good the tub itself we uh, sanitize and then we put new bedding in there and then uh, shortly after doing that she'll resume feeding um, I know we just did we won a couple of days ago I had a female lay we just cleaned her yesterday and today I fed her a frozen thawed uh, small rat so she'll uh, be in good shape and be on track again for breeding next year okay so then I'll just label this clutch um, and that's not anything real extravagant I just put the male and the female the number of eggs and the date and I'm, I'll be doing that off camera and uh, then I put them in my incubator um, there's a lot of good incubators out there um, I had some custom built I have one from habitat systems and I have a couple others as well uh, so this will go in there uh, it'll incubate for about 58 days at between 88 and 89 degrees and then the babies will hatch and who knows depending on what comes out of there you might see the babies in an upcoming video in a couple of months from now all right well i think that's all that i have it's really very very easy to incubate ball python eggs the collecting of them is pretty easy the whole process is pretty simple it just helps to do it a few times um you know i've produced many 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 ball pythons over the years so i can almost do this in my sleep uh but uh if you have any problems with it just you know kind of go through this video a couple times and you can see some of my other videos as well where i uh, I, I i have some information about egg incubating on there so uh, i hope this helps uh, i know like i said i get a lot of people requesting information on how to incubate ball python eggs um, i think i didn't really leave anything out here as far as i can tell so uh, i'll close it out there and if you want to see what ball pythons i have for sale uh, i have quite a few yet so if you uh if you do want and i actually just got done feeding all these today too i probably have uh 700 uh, 600 snakes on this half of the room that i fed today so uh, not a bad morning's work um, but anyway if you want to see what i have available make sure to check out my website royalconstrictordesigns.com and i will be back hopefully within the next week or two uh, showing off some more um, of my ball pythons here and hopefully I'll even have some babies hatching then. I'm not positive if I'll have any hatch in the next couple of weeks, but I've got maybe, I think I've, I think this was clutch number 17 or 18 for the year so far. So they're coming. I, I know I counted, I think I've got probably about 70 gravid females right now, maybe even a little bit more. So babies are coming. So anyway, uh, stay tuned for that and I uh, hope you have some luck with your breeding season this year and I will be back soon.